Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 125, it's on photons, which are little packets that make up light. I got an email from somebody and they said they have a touch light in their house, so you can touch it with your finger and it goes through different cycles, but they could hit it with a UV light and it would cycle through as well, and they wanted to know what was going on. Well, this is the photoelectric effect, and so what you're doing is you're kicking off electrons with that light, and it was really explained by Albert Einstein in 1905. Scientists knew that if you hit UV light on on metal it would kick off these little sparks but he described why that occurred and it also unlocked this whole idea of light being a particle and so light is a photon or travels as photons and those photons can be both waves and particles and Einstein showed that the amount of energy in a photon is equal to H and H is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light so as you increase the frequency you're going to increase the amount of energy that that photon has he also showed that photons are quantized that means that they traveled in little discrete units so instead of being a long wavelength stretched out, they're discrete little particles. Evidence came from spectral lines, both of emission and absorption spectrum, and then the photoelectric effect, which we'll get into in just a second. And so remember, light is made up of electromagnetic radiation, and we're just looking at one small bit of it. So it goes from really small to long wavelengths, and inversely from really low frequency to high frequency. And so an example of a wave that would have really high energy, high frequency would be gamma rays, but it's going to have a low wavelength. And radio waves are going to have long wavelengths, but they're going to have really low frequency. And so our model up to the time of Einstein was that it was a transverse wave, that the waves are traveling in one direction, but there are electric fields and magnetic fields that act perpendicular to that. But we thought it was one continuous wave that was able to, for example, interfere. The first piece of evidence that it wasn't was spectral lines. And so if you take hydrogen, put it inside a discharge tube, so if you take hydrogen, put it in a discharge so if you take hydrogen, put it in a tube, and run electrons through it, it'll give off light. But that light isn't continuous. What you're going to get are these discrete lines, or these spectral emission lines. And also if you run light through that hydrogen, it's going to absorb the comparable uh, wavelengths of light as well. And so that just suggests that light exists in these discrete little units. Further research showed really what's going on. And so what's happening is as an electron moves to a higher energy level, it needs to absorb a photon to make that change. And as it falls back down, it emits a photon. And so those photons exist in discrete units. And depending on what the atoms are, you need different amounts of photons to move the energy levels higher or lower. So this is a model of the photoelectric effect. It's the PHET simulation. I would encourage you to try it. And so what you can do is you can measure the electron that are kicked off the metal in a simple little current and then you can change the intensity and you can change the wavelength remember if we increase the wavelength we're decreasing the frequency and what they found is when you tried infrared light nothing happened but as you decrease the wavelength therefore increase the frequency what would happen is you would get to one point and then all of a sudden you get a flood of these electrons getting kicked off and it wasn't a gradual change it either kicked off the electrons and we generated current or it didn't and so what you can use is a graph of that so what we're going to do is graph the frequency on the bottom and then we're going to graph the amount of energy that's created and so what we find is there's this nice linear relationship and so as you're decreasing decreasing the frequency, you're decreasing the energy, and then there's no energy at all. And so then as we increase in the frequency again, what will happen is we'll follow that linear relationship. So this is using copper plates on either side of this vacuum tube, but we could change it to something else. We could change the metal, for example, to zinc, and now we're going to change the frequency, and we see that same graph, that linear relationship between the frequency and the energy. What did that show Einstein? Well, that showed him that there was a direct relationship and so we could figure out how much energy is being released and so all you do is simply
simply take the frequency times Planck's constant and that tells you the energy of an individual photon because it's one photon that's kicking off one electron that's generating the amount of energy that we have. And so this is our formula. Energy of a photon is Planck's constant times the frequency. As we increase the frequency, they're increasing the energy. And so did you learn to support this photon theory using the photoelectric effect? I hope so and I hope that was helpful.